there you go. Prep round. Hold person. And then, and then quit. Uh, yeah, then sneak <laughs> attack out in the open. Hey, you can't, <laughs> you can't move. Yeah, the disadvantage really helps there. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today uh, is our another Marshall Monday. Still can't it's get like that a right. third of a Marshall Monday. This is like yeah. a third of a different kind of option, too. Yeah, but uh, this, is what, this is what we got. It's true. All right. We are, we're starting it on rogues now with the, the first of the bunch, the Arcane Trickster. Which is like half wizard, half rogue. Lots of fun. I think this All is rogue. yeah. Eh, a lot of like the things don't feel very roguish to me, but it's like I you know, know, but I'm saying you still get full base class rogue. True. Uh I think this is I'm gonna rub the bandit off. I think this is the best rogue archetype. I don't think it's particularly close. I think this is the best designed one, and I wish more options in the game just had third casting. Cause they oh my god, does it make a difference? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So this is from the PHB. It is, they somehow really nailed it out the gate. I like almost everything here. So it starts you with the Arcane Trickster spell casting table. And we all love tables. We played in second edition and third edition, all that fun stuff. But the gist of it is you start with three spells and uh, three spells known and two cantrips and mage hand known. So you start with knowing six spells and you start with two first level spell slots. Then next level, you get one more spell known and one more first level spell slot. And every three levels after that, you increment like a normal spellcaster would. So where a wizard gets one level, they go from three to or three to four first level spells and two second level spells. At sixth level or seventh level, whenever you go for um uh is three levels down the road, that's whenever you would go from having three first level spells to four uh first level spells and your second level spells. This is sort of where they get the name of third casters. Is yeah. every third level instead of every other level, you get your improvements to your spell slots and you cop out at four level slots. I just thought it was like slots. less than a half caster. It is. Yeah. And also yeah. it's every three levels that was when you the get name, where the name comes from. In any case, if any if, if you didn't find that riveting explanation, <laughs> uh <laughs> all that enjoyable. We can talk about what you actually get. So like you get sure. all of these spells. Go for it. You can say something? No, I said sure. Let's uh let's move on and talk about the subclass. Yeah, so you get this big like spellcasting block. I'm not gonna read it all because it's just spellcasting, but you yeah. very importantly learn Mage Hand. That's a really important one. Additionally, it has whenever you spells known the first level or higher, you have to choose enchantment or illusion spells for the spells you pick. Um uh you start with three spells known. Two of them have to be enchantment or illusion, one of them can be whatever you want. The one that should be whatever you want probably should be find familiar. That's yeah. just neither here nor there. Uh, okay. As you gain levels, you can learn additional spells that can be from any school of magic at 18th, 14th, and 20th level, which means just like a little under half your spells will be any wizard spells. Otherwise, it'd be enchantment or illusion. That's just the important notes of why these differ in spellcast. Also, you cast spellcast with your int modifier. So, you know, your intelligence is going to be important for this option. Now, now that we've gotten through all of the spellcasting astrocies, that is a whole like class defining archetype yeah. which is you just get alongside another third level subclass feature which i think should point to everyone on the planet to say wow some of these subclasses got a raw deal looking at you monk um yes. you get mage hand letterman in addition to this so major letterman says starting at third level when you cast mage hand you can make the spectral hand invisible and you can perform the following additional tasks with it. You can stow one object the hand is holding in a container worn or carried by another creature. You can retrieve an object in a container being worn or carried by another creature. And you can use thieves' tools to pick locks and disarm traps at range. You can perform one of these tasks without being noticed by a creature if you see it on a sleight of hand check test by its perception check. In addition, you can use a bonus action granted by your cunning action to control the hand. This is such a neat little tool. I yeah. love this thing. I do too. There's one thing I don't like about it. What? This makes me not want to take telekinetic. Because it doesn't scale as well. I don't, they both well, are I don't get as much juice out of it because this gives you a lot of what that gives you. Yeah. You still get the extra range out of telekinetic yeah. at least, yeah. but you lose out on the invisibility bump and all that fun yeah, stuff. But yeah, that, all that is to say, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a fantastic little feature. The, I genuinely think the juice of it is invisible. Invisible mage hands are really fun and really mm -hmm. cool, and you can do a lot of stuff with them on its own. A lot of like the actual sleight of hand stuff is not going to be the most impactful effects in the world. There'll well, be some I mean, times it depends if you're if, 
I mean, like I said, you're not just a little bit rogue. You're all rogue. And if this really enhances some of the rogue stuff you want to do. I can. Like, if you're the kind of rogue that scouts ahead, and you will be with this archetype because you get things like invisibility at your disposal, which are enormous boons. We'll cover the spells you're going to get later. But, like, there are huge boons that spellcasting offers you as a rogue that you desperately want on your sheet. Yes. You now have the empowerment tools on your own to go do a lot of the things you want, and then you can pair that with Mage Hand's Letterman, Letterman to, like, use your Mage Hand to disarm things without them knowing about, like, I take the, the like, the, the sword slowly and quietly out of the sheath. You make a, a cute little set of hand check. Mm -hmm. Maybe you disarm the guard before they even know you're coming. That's definitely going to be more useful in lower tier play than it is in upper tier play, but you'll probably have, if you're doing regular dungeon delving, plenty of room to interface and interact with like, Mage Hand's Letterman. It's a pretty sweet little ability. I mean, there's, yeah, there's always going to be, you know, enemies with weapons. Your ability to disarm them with this is going to definitely vary. Yeah. <laughs> worth a shot. Yeah, it might be sometimes. And it being your bonus action also is, like, genuinely a real deal. If you get the drop on somebody and you attack them with your action and they haven't gone yet, you can use your bonus action if your mage hand, mage hand is out to move your mage hand to them and try and, just, like, try and pull out a weapon from their sheath and get it away from them. You can do all that with just your bonus action. Now, yeah. it's going to have a lot of asterisks, like where's your mage hand? How far can it move? How close are you to it? You know, when is all this kind of going down? But there are going to be real times in combat that you're going to be happy to use your bonus action to move your mage hand and do things with your mage hand. It's a sweet right. little first level ability. Absolutely. Uh, next feature you get is Magical Ambush, starting at ninth level. If you are hidden from a creature when you cast a spell on it, the creature has disadvantage on a saving throw mix against it. That's cool. Yeah. This is also important to note, at ninth level, you've got second level spells at your disposal, so you've got things like Blindness, Deafness in your back pocket if you want it. you got Hold Person if you want it. That's an enchantment spell. So you can have really debilitating saver dies that aren't going to be like, they're not going to be competing with Banishment. They're going to hit more often than a lot of Banishments are, because you can just bonus action hide, next turn, Hold Person. Really mm -hmm. cute little play pattern. I like it a lot. Still not yep. going to be used yep. all that much, but it's great little gravy that actually makes your spells feel like they have punch, even when they're lower level than they, uh, your competition. I don't know. I, I, I see myself using this a lot. I see, I see you sneak attacking a lot, and that's, that's going to make this that's a lot true. worse, yeah. right? This is definitely yeah. a prep round kind of thing that you want to do, not necessarily something you're going to be using round after round after round. Especially because, like, well, yeah, again, at like, ninth right. level, you have six <laughs> spell slots total. Um, Yeah. There you go. Prep round. Hold person. And then, and then crit. Uh, yeah, then sneak <laughs> attack out in the open. Hey, you can't, you can't move. Yeah, the disadvantage really helps there. And not only, it, it is any saving throw that includes yeah. subsequent saves that they make against this. That's... So breaking free of your whole person is a lot harder than it is against even like some of the wizards and stuff, as long as you're keeping your int nice and cozy. Well, you have to uh, stay hidden, though. Which, if you are hidden from a creature when you cast a spell on it, yes. it has disadvantage on any saving throw and makes a spell, oh, this turn. It does specify this right. turn. Thank you. Thank you. So you can't get up and dance while you're sneak attacking it afterwards. You can, but it, it's never going to have to, I guess, hold on. If you are hidden from a creature when you cast a spell on it, it gets disadvantage mm -hmm. this turn. All subsequent saves will be normal. Because it just checks when you cast oh. it, and it affects just that turn. Okay. All right, so Great. good. Made a mistake, fixed your mistake, everything's yeah. great. And my, my play pattern is intact. Exactly. Well, as intact as it was prior. Yes. Uh, Versatile Tricksters are 13th level feature. So at 13th level, you gain the ability to distract targets with your mage hand. As a bonus action on your turn, you can designate a creature with, in 5 feet of the special hand uh, created by the spell. With 5 feet of the special hand created by the spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Doing so gives you advantage on attack rolls against the target until the end of the turn. Uh, sure. Steady aim exists now, so this is a lot less novel, and hiding as a bonus action was always a thing you could do. This is yeah. kind of an on feature to BH. I feel like, you know, rogues, they've, they've worked out how they're going to get their, uh, their advantage. By yeah, this point. it isn't, it isn't hard. The real 13 level feature, though, that's silent here is you get third level spells. So yeah. I'm really fine with this kind of like mid, all right, maybe three, four times per campaign, I need a magical, or I need a versatile trickster. I don't want to risk the hiding, or not being able to find something to hide behind. We're just going to get it now, and I want to be able to move to, because I don't want to use steady aim. And then more importantly, oh, I got my third level spells. I got cool new things to do. I got all kinds of fun little gimmicks that I can pull out now. I'm glad I have it. You know, the, yeah. sometimes it'll just be fun to tap them on the shoulder. Huh? And then you stab Whack. them in the face. Yeah. yeah. 70 level is where you get the 
a big splashy ability. This thing is Spell Thief. So at 70 level, you gain the ability to magically steal the knowledge of how to cast a spell from another spellcaster. Immediately after a creature casts a spell that targets you or includes you in its area of effect, you can use your reaction to force it to make a saving throw with its spellcasting ability modifier. The DC equals your spell safety C. On a failed save, you negate the spell's effect against you, and you steal the knowledge of the spell if it is at least first level and of a level you can cast. Oh, I wish I didn't have that last bit in there. Oh, sure, yeah. It doesn't need to be a wizard spell. It, it would be ridiculous if it didn't. It would be a 70th level feature if it didn't. Uh, if the next true. eight hours, you know the spell and can cast it using your spell slots, the creature can't cast the spell until the eight hours have passed. Once you use the feature, you can't again for a long rest. Or until you finish a long rest, yeah. Yeah. I oh. want to like this thing so badly, but man, I just don't care about countering 4th level spells whenever there's 8th, ninth, 7th level spells flying around. Like, this is kind of just counter spell to you for 4th level and under spells once per long rest. I I already have counter spell on my sheet, thanks to 3rd level spell casting, so like, how good can this possibly be? An extra 4th level or lower counter spell that can kind of teach you it, maybe? It's narrow, it still is only good against spell casters. I I don't know. There's, if it could be any spell, I'd be into it. But man, fourth level or lower. Yeah, it doesn't sound great, but I mean, there are a lot of spells when you when you take out. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a wizard spell. Some of those have got to be worth this. So it has to cast. It has to target you or include you in an area of effect. So yeah. you can't steal like summon spells or anything with this. And it has to do it on cast. So if you, if someone makes like a, a cloud kill that you aren't in right now, yeah. it won't be able to counter that either. So like, additionally, it's pairing ideally your save DC against their save DC is kind of how that works, right? They're making the ability check using whatever their best ability modifier generally is going to be. So I'm like, how often is it even working? And then it's still once per long rest agnostic if you got the spell or not. I think this is kind of bad and had a potential to be really cool. Yeah. Um, how narrow it has to be. It is narrow, but I I have to think there are some spells that make this occasionally amazing. It can't steal shields. It can't steal absorb elements. It can't steal no. counter spells. No, but... Uh... Like those are the upper, those are the low level spells that you care about in the upper tiers, right? Are the really bread and buttery, just high raw value spells, silvery barbs, that kind of crap. <clears throat> eh. Like it silences them for that spell, so maybe it's like, oh, I guzzled your fireball, and Lich goes, okay, I'm gonna cast a fourth level area effect damage spell instead. Yeah, you did it. Congrats, right? This isn't the meat of the the subclass, though. Uh, the meat of the subclass still definitely is its spell casting, which we haven't really touched on any spells at all. Um, Bob, what do you think are the winners of the wizard spells that are enchantment and or illusion and or just other? Because you can pick any you want at those specific levels. What oh, do you want God. on your rogue? I don't know. Well, I definitely want invisibility. Are we, are we talking easy first second level? level one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, at first level, I have really great news for you if you want a busted option. Silvery Barb sure is an enchantment spell. Yeah, that's that's a good one. It's real good. And the more members of the party that have it, the better. So like, oh baby. Yeah, you can do some nasty things as your rogue. It's like, oh, I'm going to get advantage on my tackle that would have missed. And then you get just advantage. And it's like, yeah, gross, disgusting stuff. Oh, sorry, it's you get disadvantage for trying to hit somebody else. But I have advantage with Prox my sneak attack on its own. Ah, that's so good. Uh, holy crap, Silver Barb is a busted spell. We also got, like, Disguise Self, I think is really, really cute. I love Disguise Self at their level rogues, just to be like, oh, yeah. this is just a cool thing I can do now. I like that. It's uh, It fits the trickster kind of archetype a lot. It's pretty solid. I really like, um again, Find Familiar is oh, so hand-in-hand -hand with this. Find Familiars are amazing on rogues. Familiars are amazing on everyone, but they fit that archetype of sneaking around and infiltration. It gets you, like, letters and stuff, breaks into people's windows, unlocks a door so you can come to the front door or whatever. Super cool stuff there. I'm looking through them now. All right, there's minor illusion. I'm, you, you, oh, that's a cantrip now. Uh, yeah, sure, you can do minor. Uh, we right, right. grab bag at them, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You get three um, cantrips out the gate, so like my is yeah. one of the minor illusions, another banger to take. Uh, you probably don't need any of the damage in cantrips, but you could take like booming blade. That one's kind of a harmless upgrade. You have on text, only making one left attack around. So if you're doing combat rogue things, sure, it's kind of free. I'm still not in love with it. I still think most of the time I'd rather just have another utility cantrip, but. Ooh, they're slow. Is that uh, does that count? 
Third is a third uh, a third level. No, that's spell. transmutation. Yeah, here I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the list just for your ease of perusal. Okay. And you can just take a look at these. They're just the enchantment and illusion spells. Oh, so right, that was not enchantment nor illusion. No, that's uh, transmutation. That's true. Notably, you're not a ritual caster, I don't believe. So, like, ritual casting isn't something you can really do. But I would actually say, like, the ritual caster feat is going to go really well alongside this kind of character because you're going to want access to lots of little tools and stuff like that. And it's going to make stuff like Phantom Steed kind of appealing because it's a little illusion spell that gives you some high speed utility stuff. Um, the third level options, I think, are kind of your worst. Fear definitely is one that stands out to you, though, right? You love fear. Yes, yes. And at when when you get third level spells, thirteenth level or some crap. Third level spells come online at fourteenth level, or sorry, thirteenth level. Yeah, so eight levels after someone else got it, this is where they definitely going to start to feel like okay, these are not going to be that amazing. There's and a again, hypnotic pattern, a uh, major image. If if you find value in that, yeah, I think both those spells can have really high impacts even in the upper tiers. Uh, finally, copy tapping us up. We got the fourth level enchantment illusions. Uh, greater invisibility is obviously the one that stands out to me. Is just yeah, I'm invisible. Absolutely. I've all my attack rolls. That's just a thing that you want to be doing, generally speaking. Um, Charm monster, I'm a very big fan of. And you hate listener terrain, but that's also here if you want to try and figure that out. <laughs> Why do you keep giving me shit about that? It sucks. Did you, it does did suck. you not it's, agree I on said, the video? I said I don't know how you would use it, but it's an illusion, so it's probably going to do something powerful. I'm giving you crap because you really, really died on the Antipathy Sympathy Hill, and I all don't right, think right. Antipathy Sympathy is better than Hallucinatory Terrain. I think they're pretty close, honestly, <laughs> in usability. Oh. I think Psychic Glance is also, like, relative to Psychic Glance is another option you might find value in every once in a while just like a stun especially because you can use your i sneak and then i run some psychic glance and they have disadvantage on the saves they take the damage and are stunned and that's very likely to happen and there aren't subsequent saves so like it works really well with the the ninth level ability you get here that's pretty neat Ooh, is tasha do i like tasha's mind whip that's one i uh i keep forgetting exactly there's one and there's one similar sounding that i keep forgetting what each one does oh yeah i like tasha's mind whip that's it's the one. the damage plus. This isn't a stun, but it's like a baby relative like a lance, right? They gotta they gotta choose whether they move or take an action or a bonus action. It yeah, only gets one little, of the three. Neat little utility option for sure. Yeah. All things considered, um, a lot of the juice is gonna be you take the best wizard spells you want. I honestly really like animate dead with this too, right? Like you can mm -hmm. if that's gonna be one of the general ones you take. Kind of like a utility spell that just builds up an army of the undead. That's always like you don't need more than a couple of third level spell slots to have a battalion of skeleton archers with you. So the eight works pr plays pretty well, especially in the mid to upper tiers. Um, and most of the juice you're going to get from this are going to be the utility stuff, right? You're going to pick up shield, maybe if you don't want to take, um, you probably take silvery barbs or shield. You could take both if you don't want to find familiar, but like you can, you can work in a lot of the just known powerful quantity cheap spells and visibility shields, facility barbs, find familiar. They're all going to radically improve your rogue's performance. Uh, and on top of that, you're getting genuinely good little features. Major Letterman is sweet. Magical Ambush will have its moments to shine alongside being the time you get third level spell slots. Versatile Trickster is a nice little say or a nice little or sorry magical ambush is second level uh spell slots versatile trickster is the third level spell slots upgrade where you're like i get a little bit of a way to try the advantage on things but more importantly i get third level spells and like spell thief is not a great capstone i'm gonna level with you it's it's pretty crap but it is still you're still in an archetype that's gonna have had a great time playing most of this game and yeah. because the rest of this is so solid i think i'm gonna give it a solid b a capstone would push it into a territory but given what it's got this is i think by far rogue's best like fair archetype and i would recommend anyone that wants to play a rogue for their first time this is a great way to dip your toes into spell casting it's a great way to get a lot of extra utility on your sheet you're gonna feel like when you take misty step you're gonna now an invincible amazing super cool assassin trickster kind of character so um yeah highly recommend this option all right b sounds good and yes i'll agree it's not at face value the mo the best uh capstone feature in the world um what i'd like to hear from you dear audience is um, what what are the spells? I, I I didn't have time to peruse every first through fourth level spell in the game, but uh, what are the spells that would make this amazing? Like I think it has the potential to possibly be. Let us know in the comments, mm -hmm. and let us know your general thoughts on uh, Arcane Trickster as well. Um, there you go. That was Arcane Trickster. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
I cannot press the end button. 